My name is Melissa Tosto, and I am bisexual. I can tell you firsthand that there are these subtle differences that happen when you walk around holding the hand of a woman than when you walk around holding the hand of a man. It's assumed you are heterosexual unless you tell someone otherwise. And by holding the hand of a woman, I am saying to the world, I am otherwise. I was treated otherwise. And I would see people take the second look at our hands. Are they really holding hands? Are they really a couple? Are people sort of snickering behind their back and whispering questions. Having had those experiences in my life, I have found myself to become more empathetic for people of all sorts of minorities, especially minorities that don't necessarily have a choice of when you see their minority and when they don't. It's not written on my skin what my sexuality is, but for many people, it's written all over them who they are. They walk in a world where people whisper behind them and talk behind their backs and worse because they're choosing to live authentically. I'm much more sensitive to how we condemn people for being themselves. And I walk around holding my boyfriend's hand and I have a new understanding of what that freedom feels like. And I understand that when I was walking around holding my ex's hand, a woman's hand, that I was being discriminated against and in all these subtle ways we're discriminating against people for simply being who they are. I look forward to the day when everybody gets to walk around holding whomever's hand and do so with a great deal of freedom. In 2008 I was engaged to a woman and we were waiting to hear back the results of the election that year which included both the election of Barack Obama to the presidency and also California's vote on Proposition 8. Before the election, my partner and I had decided that we would wait to get married and we would not rush to get married before the election because we all feared that the election would go the way it did and that we wouldn't be able to get married and that we would still have our ceremony but we'd be domestic partners. It was one of the times in my life I felt most unequal. The time that I had to make a decision like that, whether I was gonna rush my wedding so that I could be legally married or if I could do just like everyone else does and have my longer engagement and plan my perfect wedding. And then we got the results. We realized that when we had our wedding, we would not be getting married. And it was heartbreaking. But at the same time, we were electing President Barack Obama. He carried so much hope. I knew that he would fight the good fight, encourage legislation in the way of the LGBT community. So I was simultaneously disappointed in my state and overwhelmed with pride for my country. A few years ago, I had the opportunity to be at a Victory Fund event. Victory Fund is an organization that raises money for and supports LGBT people who run for office. This event was an opportunity for people to learn what their different options are and how to get involved in the government. I was in a room of hundreds of LGBT people who were looking for ways to get involved in politics and sort of push the needle and make a difference. And we got the chance to listen to Tammy Baldwin speak, who's a huge advocate for our community, and seeing so many people that are willing to live out and live in positions of leadership and be courageous enough to do what they can to make a change and to make the world a little bit of a better place. It was an awe-inspiring opportunity for me. I think no matter who you are, it takes a great deal of courage to live authentically. So if it is your truth that you are L, G, B, or T, or anything in between, you're no different than anybody else. It's going to take courage to be self-aware. It's going to take courage to share that self-awareness with others. And I would encourage everybody to use that courage to be more compassionate with people who don't necessarily see things the way we see them, the way you see them. We all have our own different set of circumstances that cause us to react in the way that we do. And I know when I chose to come out to my family, they were coming from a very different background and they were very conservative and very Christian and they didn't know how to interact with me or how to react to the news that I was giving them. I think that's okay. We just have to take people for where they're at. We're asking people for it to take us as we are and I think it's important that when we're having these conversations we allow people to be where they are and trust that love trumps hate every time.